all my LGBT friends and others. Okay, so today I'm going to continue reading chapter 27 of Leviticus. And um, uh, before I do that, of course, please do um, pray uh, before you hear the word so that the uh, Lord can uh, work in you and um, uh, help you discern what it is that you're hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So, um, and so I always like to, you know, read the word out loud. Um, and um, uh, let's see. So let's just get started and um, go into this chapter 27. Chapter 27 is concerning uh, vows, okay, of the Lord's firstlings. Uh, no devoted thing may be redeemed, and the tithe may not be changed. Okay. Uh, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by thy estimation. So the vows are sacred. Okay. And um, thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. And if it be a female, then thy estimation shall be 30 shekels. And it shall be from five years old, even until 20 years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male 20 shekels, and for the female 10 shekels. And if it be from a month old, even until five years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male 5 shekels of silver, and for the female thy estimation shall be 3 shekels of silver. And if it be from 60 years old and above, it shall be a male, and thy estimation shall be 50, 15 shekels, and for the female, 10 shekels. And if he be a poorer than thy estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to his ability that vowed shall, be, shall the priest value him. And it shall be... A beast, wherein men bring an offering unto the Lord, um, all that any man giveth of such unto the Lord shall be holy. He shall not alter it, nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. If he shall at all change beast for beast, then it and the exchange thereof shall be holy. And if it be any unclean beast, of which they do not offer a sacrifice unto the Lord, then he shall present the beast before the priest. And the priest shall value it, whether it be good or bad, as thou valuest it, who art the priest, so shall it be. But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation. And when a man shall sanctify his house and be holy unto the Lord, then the priest shall estimate it, whether it be good or bad. As the priest shall estimate it, so shall it stand. And if he that sanctified it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of the estimation unto it, and it shall be his. And if a man shall sanctify unto the Lord some part of a field of his possession, then that estimation shall be according to the seed thereof. A homer of barley seed shall be valued at fifty shekels of silver. If he sanctify his field from the year of, of Jubilee, according to thy estimation, it shall stand. But if he sanctify his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon unto him the money according to the years that it, that remained, even unto the year of the jubilee, and it shall be abated from thy estimation. 
And if he that sanctified the field will in any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it, and it shall be assured to him. And if he will not redeem the field, or if he have sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed any more. But the field, when it goeth out into the jubilee, shall be holy unto the Lord, as a field devoted. The possession thereof shall be the priest. So a priest gets his dues too. And if a man sanctify unto the Lord a field which he, which he hath brought, which is not of the fields of his possession... Then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of thy estimation, even until the year of the jubilee, and he shall give thine estimation in that day as a holy thing unto the Lord. In the year of the jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong. And all of thy estimation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary, twenty Garaz shall be the shekel. Only the firstling, or the firstborn, of the beast, which shall be the Lord's firstling, no man shall sanctify it, whether it be an ox or a sheep, it is the Lord's divine ownership. Okay, And if it be of an unclean beast, then he shall redeem it according to thine estimation, and shall add a fifth part of it there, uh, thereto, or if it be not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to thy estimation. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord of all that he hath, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord. None devoted which shall be devoted of men shall be redeemed but surely shall surely be put to death. All of the tide of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. If a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock or even whatsoever patheth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he changes it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses of the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. <clears throat> okay, so now we are into Numbers. And the fourth book of Moses is called Numbers. Uh, the author of it is Moses, and uh, it was probably written B.C. 1490. Um, and... Uh, the men's, uh, th everything is numbered. Uh, the hairs of our head are numbered. The days of our lives are numbered. Um, interesting that the book is called Numbers. So um, this is going into a whole different uh, uh, chapter of the Bible. And um, let's see what else can I tell you about Numbers here. Um, if I can go into my concordance here uh, let's see okay you know since we just talked about the jubilee I just wanted to kind of maybe uh, re uh, uh, emphasize what the you know the God says you know please honor my Sabbaths there's more than just one you know day of the week there are many uh, sabbatical uh, 
days. You know, the, the seventh year of the Mosaic Law requir required that land should be remain untilled. Uh, slaves were be, uh, to be liberated, debts remitted. I wish we had that law now in the United States. We wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. Um, and so the Sabbath is, is the seventh day is divinely set apart and, and it's a day of rest and worship. The year of the Jubilee, this occurred at the end of, seven, of a seventh sabbatical year of the 50th year. And it was a year of complete release. Slaves were be, to be emancipated, mortgages released, real estate reverted to its original owners except in a walled city. The land was to lie fallow, as in the ordinary sabbatic year. The moral purpose was to unite the people in brotherhood, check oppression, lighten the load of poverty. You know, if we had all this, we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. We wouldn't have riots that we have going on right now in Milwaukee. And I, I really believe that since the sheriff of Milwaukee, um, the uh, black sheriff who has just been a staunch um, supporter of the Constitution, um, upstanding uh, man and NRA member. He's been uh, spoken out uh, against um, the oppression of the Second Amendment and our rights. And uh, he's spoken quite often on, say, the Hannity Show or Fox News. And I believe that they've targeted his town and are giving him a lot of grief. So, I would, you know, keep him in prayer. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I was going to try to find you the thing about numbers here. Um, if I can find. My Bible has so many great, wonderful things in the back of it. i just really so um, grateful to, for all of the different... Uh, uh, extras that I got in this Bible a long time ago, uh, Bible harmonies, illustrated studies, and the, you know it talks about the prophecies fulfillment. It's really a great study Bible. Um, you know, I don't know if you can still find it these days. Um, a lot of our uh, uh, oh, good, I found it here. Okay. A lot of our uh, Bible stores have been um, closed up. So let's see if I can try to find this real quick here. Um, okay, Book of Numbers. of time? Yeah. Okay, so the Book of the Pilgrimage of Israel, uh, the Tree of Moses' Life, okay, uh, the name is derived from the numberings of Israel. Uh, the author is Moses. Central lesson is unbelief bars an interest, entrance to the abundant life. Leading topic and events um, are organization, legislation, leaving Mount Sinai, what, ha you know, what happens to the people. The mixed multitude, <coughs> load the manna, um, Discouragement of Moses, 70 elders appointed, quail sent, uh, jealousy of Miriam and Aaron. Uh, then it goes into the failure of Kadesh, Barnea, uh, lost in sight of home. Sending of spies, the reports, what happens, the rebellion of the people, um, the curse pronounced among them, the whole generation doomed, the events uh, connected with the 40 years wandering in the wilderness, the return to the Kadesh barns of sin of uh, and the sin of Moses and the death of Aaron, the brazen serpent, Balaam, the mercenary prophet, the corruption of Israel, the numbering of the new generation, sundry laws concerning inheritance, offerings, feasts, vows, the judgment of Midian, the assignment of the land east of Jordan, the cities of refuge, the messianic types, the smitten rock, the brazen serpent, the cities of refuge, the seven murmurings concerning the way, the food, the giants, the leaders, the divine judgments, the desert, the second time concerning the manna. And yeah, so that's it. Um, so that's what's going to be talked about. All right. 
Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.